Hey all you Hellmaniacs, it's Hellmanator, and today I want to discuss something. Lancaster Freshers Week! So I'm re-recording this video actually, because when I originally recorded it, it was going to be going up last week. However, due to some shenanigans, it's now going up when you see it. And, uh, so now it's actually going to start. This video is designed specifically for freshers going to Lancaster University. Uh, I'm sure some of the advice that I give might be able to apply to other unis, but this one is designed specifically for Lancaster, based on the fact that I was there last year. And, uh, yeah, I realise I've already done a Tips for Freshers video, but stuff it. I'm doing another. So congratulations, you've just got into Lancaster University, whether you did it through an unconditional offer or through clearing. That honestly doesn't matter, because no one will have a record of that. You're the only one who will know it, and so all of your A-levels are behind you. You can forget all about the stress of that, <laughs> because now, university. First things first, the colleges. Now, at the start, you're going to feel very much confined to your college, almost, because you literally spend all of your time with them during Freshers' Week. I spent all of my time with Pendle myself. I am a Pendle, uh, Pendle boy, personally. I was in Pendle Ghetto, for those of you who don't know what that is. It is the standard accommodation in Lancaster that is specifically from Pendle. And, uh, I think that that's fine, it doesn't matter which type of accommodation you're in, but at the start of your year, you are going to be spending most of your time with your own college. What I would advise is you're already going to be meeting so many people. So, for one thing, get everyone on Facebook as soon as possible. If you're not already in the Pendle Freshers or the Lonsdale Freshers or Cartmel or whatever college you're in, get into that group chat on Facebook, because there's always a group chat on Facebook. Get to know people as quickly as possible, because you're going to be living with them for the next year. As I said, at the start, you're going to be spending a lot of time with your colleges, but throughout the year, you're going to be mixing colleges, and trust me, no one cares. The whole idea of a inter-college rivalry, it really only exists for the sports, essentially. Uh, whenever you're going to Sugar House, which for those of you who don't know, is the university-run nightclub, or at least currently is. I think they are talking about potentially selling it, which they really shouldn't do. Um, but whenever you're going on the bus to there, there will always be chants, um, usually deflammatory ones towards other colleges, but no one actually takes them seriously. And yeah, pretty much everyone doesn't care about what college you're in, unless you're playing a sport. Then it, you know, slaughter anyone who isn't in Pendle, Pendle for the win, haha. -ha. An important bit of advice I can give you, particularly for Freshers Week, is um, get out there. Uh, if you're going to be drinking, then one big bit of advice that I can give especially is visit all of the bars during Freshers Week, because it gives you a good feel for, you know, how each one of them is throughout the rest of the year. And sometimes, if you don't, you might find one that you really like towards the end, and that can kind of suck for you. But uh, if you go and visit them all during Freshers, you're going to be fine. Personally, based on uh, my own experience, I realise I may sound biased on this, but I felt like, during Freshers Week at least, Pendle Bar was the best, because it had actual music playing, whereas a lot of the other bars just didn't bother with it. Uh, Grisdale Bar is good for cocktails, uh, Fylde is particularly great if you're going to want to watch the sports, although I believe you can also do that in Boland. I was quite fond of Boland Bar in general, uh, it's just got a good aesthetic. County Bar was at the far end for me, so I didn't get, often get up there, but it was, like, there aren't any bad bars on campus. Lonsdale and Cartmel seemed a bit more, you know, like traditional bars, I guess, but the most like a traditional pub is definitely Grad College, uh, which you can go into, by the way. That's, it's called Grad College, but you don't have to be a grad to drink in that pub. Now, a lot of you are going to be feeling homesick during this initial stretch, and there's 
really no one piece of advice that I can give to you to solve homesickness because it's different for everyone. For me personally, I didn't really feel homesickness. I, uh, I'm a cold, emotionless person apparently. But for a lot of my flatmates, they felt it a lot. Advice in general for dealing with homesickness is try and go the first week without calling anyone. Because if you can make it that one week, then it will become a whole lot easier throughout the rest of the year. If you can't and you need to call someone, then there is no judgment there on anyone's part. But if you can make it through that first week without actually calling anyone from home, then it's going to be a lot easier for you in the next couple of weeks when it really sinks in. Academics at Lancaster is going to be very different from anything you've experienced at your schools. And I realise some of you have been on a gap year, so that might actually be long forgotten by now. But uh, schooling, it's not the same as university. You are going to need to research yourself. And you can't really just coast by on what they give you in the lectures. Also, lectures and seminars and stuff aren't recorded. So make sure that if you physically can get there, you, you go. Because they're exceptionally useful. But, as I said, you do need some extra stuff. Now, your academic staff are going to be very helpful in that. Uh, throughout my first year, they had most of like the essential readings all on, a, uh, all on a list for me. And then they also had a separate list full of like things that would be good for you to read but aren't essential. And then on top of that, if you're very interested in a particular topic, and your professor gives you access to the slides, then usually they've referenced what uh, texts they've taken particular information out of in their own slides at the very, very bottom. So you might be interested in scrolling down to the bottom and using some of those sources. And if you are going to read them for just reading's sake, then they're also pretty darn good if you ever have to write a research paper. The spine is almost always under construction, as far as I can tell. There seems to be constant work on it, although hopefully it will be better this year. Uh, they seem to have done the vast majority of it last year, or the years before. And because of that, they've got a whole new section of hand railings and everything. It's all very safe, but it does mean that sometimes the spine can get a bit crowded. So, if you're smart about it, what you want to do if you're walking from, say, South End to North End, is instead, if you can't handle the crowds, uh, take a right at Fylde College and then go up towards Goberito and Spa, that sort of area. And then from there you can easily rejoin Alexandra Square and basically you've just missed out on, it's not an exceptionally long area, but you avoid a little bit of the traffic. In terms of cheap places to get food from, Lancaster's not the best. Uh, it's got an Iceland, which is reasonable. And if you can get all the way up to like Morecambe area, I think there's an Aldi or a Lidl. Um, but in terms of Lancaster itself, there's only really a Sainsbury's, which you can survive on and it's, you know, it's not awful, but it's not, it's not great. So I would recommend ordering your food in if you can. Now, sometimes these places won't let you order below a certain amount, but if you just get with your flatmates and all order all of your food at the same time and then split it up how, you know, you pay however much it costs for your own stuff, then it should just, you know, work out far better and it means you don't have to actually travel anywhere. The gym has been recently refurbished, so it should be pretty darn good if you're gonna wanna go. If I'm absolutely honest, I personally never needed anything more than a bronze membership, which is definitely the cheapest. The silver one is essentially the same as the bronze, just with slightly longer times. One thing I've noticed about the bronze, it may not work for you guys, it worked for me though, uh, is that they don't keep a record of when you leave, only when you enter. So as long as you get in to the uh, cardio or the weight rooms before your allotted time zones where you can only work out, theoretically you can work out there longer. 
Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it in case they do catch you out, but uh, something to consider. Sultan's is amazing after a night out and it is actually surprisingly cheap considering it's kind of a smaller brand and whatnot, but it gets crowded. And also, they will just take photos and upload them through their Snapchat. So if you're not wanting someone to know that you've gone out, then uh, don't go to Sultan's because they'll... And you're going to almost definitely be in that picture. And then someone will spot it and be like, Hey, what's the deal? <laughs> One thing I cannot recommend enough, though, while at Sultan's, is the milkshakes. I only discovered them towards the end of my year at Lancaster, but oh, a good Sultan's milkshake that I, I could really do with one right now. In terms of my favorite place to eat on campus, that would be Go Burrito. It's just far nicer in terms of my aesthetic. Maybe not yours, but I personally recommend it. One good thing that I forgot to mention is the brilliant student run service called Campus Bites. Uh, this isn't sponsored, I just really love them. They were set up by some genius entrepreneurial students last year and essentially what they will do is they will take food from one of the places on campus and deliver it straight to you. So if you're having a lazy day or if you've just got back and you just remembered that you don't have anything in the freezer, you can go on Campus Bites Facebook page which I'm going to link down below and then order from Ketchup or La Pizzeretta or Sultan's or anywhere on campus and uh, they will deliver it to you which is great and it's always good to support student business so uh, if you're going to be ordering order through Campus Bites not Spawn but I recommend it. If you do running as I occasionally did back at Lancaster then the route around the university is particularly good I can't I think it's the Woodland Trail uh, essentially you're in the woods and yeah it's pretty nice it's a relatively easy route I find because it's mostly flat if you are in Pendle Ghetto uh, particularly on the side near South Road then there's a good chance that the big building behind you with the glass front that building occasionally for no reason in particular will start beeping in the middle of the night uh, not especially loud but loud enough that you can hear it in your rooms uh, can be a bit of a pain if you're someone like me and was already awake and so it might stop you from sleeping but other than that it's generally fine the area behind that building is one of my favorite places in Lancaster it's uh, you get it behind it and there's like a patio area essentially and then you can just like Stand there and it goes onto a field now. You don't go on the field obviously because Environment but uh like the view that you can get from there is Really really great. You can see over the motorway and just up up to the hills and It's great if you're looking to feed a lot of people with takeaway food relatively cheaply, then Simply Delicious might be your safest bet. Uh, I'm not sure of any like hygiene standards or anything, but I ordered from there plenty of times and I'm fine. They do 16 inch pizzas and uh, last time I checked those were about 10-11 pounds. So uh, very very good pricing in terms of if you compare it to Domino's and stuff like that. Sorry, camera just died. At university you're going to meet people who are doing things that you've never done before, be that just like a sport or be that some mature bedroom activities or be it a particular substance that they ingest. And whilst some of those new things might be for you, others maybe not i cannot state this hard enough please if you don't feel comfortable doing something don't do it the security team at lancaster are great from my interactions with them at least they've been very helpful as have the porters so if you're having any trouble with anything in particular then feel free to just go and talk to them and they are very understanding they're great 
remember to check your mail in the porter's lodges because people forget and uh, I was checking my mail relatively often while I was up there. The same letter was there for six months and no one collected it. Remember to plan ahead when you've got a lecture that day because it can take a while to walk from one end of campus to the other. Now, depending on your walking speed, that might literally take you 10 minutes or it might take you 30. But you need to work out how long it does take you so that you can actually get to your stuff on time. You're going to have a number of 9am's in all likelihood. I know I sure did. And uh, you need to be there. Lancaster is insanely small for a city. It has a population of 50,000 with a student population included in that of around 17,000, making us essentially two-fifths of the population. So be aware of that, don't be a right nuisance, because if you are, you're going to upset the locals, and that can cause a whole bunch of trouble further down the line. I'm not saying don't enjoy yourself, but I am saying don't be a pain in the backside. Fair? Remember that even though you may not have done academics for a year and you're very used to your independence or that you've spent your entire life living in a very protective household and this is your first glance at, you know, being your own person solely as yourself, that doesn't give you the right to go around and invalidate anyone else in their emotions and their opinions. University is a great time to go and meet people who you wouldn't normally talk to and just experience like a whole new set of uh, subcultures and stuff. So why not take the chance? Because <laughs> it's not very often in adult life that you can just go up to someone and be like, hi, how are you? I'm a fresher. Would you like to be my friend? Get to know the way that your department likes you to do referencing and get to know it quick because Referencing is a pain in the backside if you don't know how to do it. I learnt Harvard referencing while I was at Baysleg, which was my school before Lancaster. And then I got to Lancaster and they told me that I could either continue doing Harvard or I could do Chicago for my particular department. Now other departments have different rules so you're going to have to look it up yourself. But I chose to learn Chicago referencing because I flipping hated doing Harvard referencing. And I got relatively good at it. And then I came over here to Waikato University where I'm spending my study abroad year. And I found out that they want me to do APA referencing, which is something I had never heard of, was not remotely prepared for. And so I had to learn a whole new style of referencing within like two or three hours while I was just writing down all of my references for an essay that was due like immediately I got it within 50 seconds of the deadline ending that's how close it was. Deadlines at university are very different to how they are at school. At school oh you've been ill okay you can have it on my desk tomorrow. You forgot okay have it on my desk tomorrow. Have it on my desk, it's always have it on my desk tomorrow, or next lesson, or next week. Apologies for the moth. At university, deadlines are hard, they are solid, and there is no getting around them. It doesn't matter if you were ill, it matters whether you did the work. So make sure that you start your work as soon as possible, and that you actually get it done. Also check with your department whether you need to hand in both a paper copy and a copy of Moodle, which is the electronic way that the university handles stuff. I'm sure they'll tell you more about it during Freshers Week. But um, I know the geography department last year didn't have to hand them in physically. But my department, the PPR department, we had to hand in both physically and via Moodle. And now, while I'm over here at Waikato, I only have to hand them in electronically. So each department is going to be structured completely differently, and you need to learn specifically about your one. Finally, we're coming to the end. I just want to give you random tidbits, which you might find useful. Uh, Pendle Rooms, every Thursday, has something called Pendle Live, where basically they allow musicians to come in and play some music for you, live, obviously. And it's generally a pretty good night. It's nice. It's relaxing usually. Uh, one of my friends did it last year actually and he was really good. But it's just, it's a good way to calm yourself down on a particular day. 
so maybe pop over and visit there. Unfortunately, all of the social issues that exist outside of Lancaster do exist within Lancaster, but that doesn't mean that the university isn't trying to change anything. So if you do experience something, please go and talk to someone at the base or in security or just in the student union as a representative. I'm sure that they'll give you better information during Freshers Week as to who exactly to speak to. If you have a question, please ask. It's your lecturer's job to answer you. And if you don't ask, you'll never get an answer. And you're basically just screwing yourself over which isn't the best. The lecturers aren't going to think you're any less intelligent for asking a question. In fact, the likelihood is they're more likely to actually like you if you ask a question because it means that you are engaging with the topic. Of course, there are right times to ask, so maybe if the lecturer says not in right now, then ask later or at the end after the lecture, you can usually go up to the lecturer and talk to them then for like a minute or two. Check into your subjects using iLancaster. The app is a bit dodgy. Uh, it is very dodgy on laptops, fair warning to you, but you can use it usually. If you do have a technology issue, then there is a tech team who can help you. Uh, they're in the, I think it's called the student study area. I'm not 100% though. If you're going into Alexandra Square from the south, then it's going to be directly in front of you. If you're going in through the north, then assuming you're going via the spine, it's going to be on your right. Dalton Rooms and Glow is nightclubs are slightly more expensive than a lot of the other nightclubs. Personally, me and my friends spent most time in either the Sugar House, which we would all just call Sugar, just call it Sugar for simplicity, but that's the university run nightclub until they potentially sell it off, or Generation, which is a gay bar, but they are very welcoming of people like me who are not members of the LGBTQAI plus community. So, I hope you enjoy your freshers week uh, now that it's about to begin. It's going to be a wild experience, particularly this first week. Uh, if you do feel kind of, you know, rough in the first week, don't let that be your defining factor because a lot of people don't find their first week their best week. And quite often you'll think, hey, I should already have friends here because you're so used to having friends from back home, but you haven't had time to make friends here. Anyway, I'm going to leave this off here, so hopefully whatever the heck this rambling video was, was useful for you. Uh, I have no idea whether it will be, but uh, I'm just going to go now. Okay, thanks for watching all. I shall catch you next time.